All right, thank you for staying with us. Now, we are trying to place a bet who will win between Elon Musk and Zuckerberg. Mo will just, Mo will just know ourselves now. If you, are for, if you are for thread, let me know. Yeah, I'm going to bet Ninja. <laughs> Because I can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so in all major urban centers in Nigeria, the vandalism of infrastructure is an ongoing social issue. Despite the insufficient provision of infrastructure, criminals and mob have um, consistently vandalized the available facilities such as oil pipeline, airports, bridges, and so on. This has undoubtedly put a strain on the limited resources of federal state and local governments. Now, for instance, an analysis published by Budget, Nigeria's civil tech organization, revealed how the Nigerian government lost $74 million every day in 2022 due to the decrease in crude oil output under the Buhari, President Buhari-led administration with oil theft. Now, hear this. Being one of the most rampant form of vandalism so it was due to oil theft that some of these things really happened mm -hmm. now in recent times of civil um, apprehension or unrest such as during the answers we've seen cases of people taken to the streets to vandalize private and government-owned properties as a form of protest now the the case of the niger braid and um, bridge and most recently airport vandalism also goes to show that it is a premeditated act that happens even in the time of peace. So tonight, we're asking, what is the impact of vandalism on public infrastructure? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. You can also thread us at WayShowAfrica. Ah, what would they add them? Because Elon Musk now. Mm. Mm, you know, Pios. Oh, let's be balanced. <laughs> <laughs> but this conversation, I think, is an age-old conversation that I think I get really, really tired of talking about. Because, um, and I said this when I took when I took the story of the airport vandalism, and I said something around, you know, I I notice it's most predominant when there's a change of government. So I remember, I think it was Edo State Governor doing a video. Was it even a dosage governor? No, this recent one that just happened, the signing. I can't remember what state. Is it Benway now? No single, no single item was in the government house. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what I state now. One of those, uh, one, of those one of this, one of this new um, yeah. newly elected governor was lamenting mm -hmm. how no single um, furniture. furniture, nothing, no car, nothing was left in the government house. So you see this issue about vandalism. There is vandalism that happens on the streets, on the roads, day to day. But even within government, right? And that's why I say that it is, it's actually a difficult thing to solve. Because you know why? The people that are supposed to be the protectors of this public infrastructure, they are the ones that are most culpable mm. when it comes to um, what's it called um, um, vandalizing those infrastructure. Now, take, for instance, the story that EC took on the airport lights, right? Part of what they said in within the story was that this light, they steal it so that they come back to resell it because it is not a, it's not particularly a kind of light that you can use anywhere else. Mm. It has to be at the airport. Yeah. So, I mean, does that not tell you that somebody turns a blind eye, yeah. go get it so that, you know what, since there's a new change in power, we'll just put it as part of our requisition. That's why you oh. see that even with the budget, you see multiple padding for something. But did we not just fix this pipeline? We've seen the railway um, um, chairman come out to say that how they were pulling out the rail tracks oh, yeah. of a newly built rail, rail line, right? How people were removing all the, the bolts and the nuts and all of that. These things continuously happen all the time. So I don't understand how, first of all, we have allowed it to stay this long that it has not become a part of us. Because this is, is abnormal. You can't catch anybody anywhere outside of this country, going to a public, like with the boldness to go and take on this thing. So when we talk about impact, right, it is coming back to us because what we are seeing now is repeated spend on, a, on an infrastructure that you should have moved away from a long time ago. You see the same infrastructure this time around, and guess what? If they had budgeted a billionaire last year, it would now be times three of what they spent because 
inflation and so yeah. many things have also impacted it. Yeah. So we're not moving forward. Yeah. As long as we have issues around vandalism, right, with our infrastructure, yeah. we will never move forward. We will never get to that point where we truly have a functional infrastructure in Nigeria. That's my take. But let me hear your thoughts, Jola. Mm. Well, mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Nigerians, you see, from the very lowest levels, Nigerians have, we, we, we are not accountable for anything. Yep. We have no respect for anything. And, I mean, personally, I have seen a situation where I was on the road and a newly fixed road, major road, highway, and there were boys digging mm -hmm. just you. so that traffic will slow would down. happen and they can sell, sell their traffic. Wares. God will bless you. So when it's easy to say that, I, I always say that when there is no accountability no enforcement nothing would work it's a whole collapse of a system if a mini if there is a if if okay i'll give an example a road is being done when a minister approves for this project to be done the contractor is supposed to have said this road that i am doing is supposed to be like this for the next five years maintenance will start in the sixth year you know i mean that's how i know that they do projects and you know so you have m and e teams you you have all these people on ground so it becomes i i, I don't know how it is possible that nobody would hold a minister accountable mm -hmm. if in two weeks a road that was supposedly just constructed you can see patches or you can see holes uh, and the minister would wake up and still go to work the next day. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely crazy. So when we don't have checks and balances, when they know that they can go scot-free, it's going to cut across all sectors mm -hmm. just like that. And that is what will make someone who is supposed to be in a public, you know, a, a government house paid for by taxpayers mm -hmm. who feels they have earned the rights to take government belongings to their personal homes. It's crazy. Because even when you go to a hotel, nowadays, hotel will tell you, open your bag. Are you taking our towel? Return it. <laughs> hotels are doing it now. Big hotels. So I'm not talking 20,000. Big hotels, they are part. So when people, people would always step out of line, naturally. People want to, they, they want to see how far they can push. But when people understand that hmm, if they catch you, hmm. forget you are going to jail. Hmm. But what do you expect? Even the policeman is there. You are talking of um, petrol, people siphoning petrol and all that. Is it? Did we not hear that it was military people? Hmm. You, you hear all sorts of things and then you just go like, you know what? Nigeria is just a free for all. Anything you can take, just take and be churn. Hmm. Any of, every other person, face your front and hmm. let me just do my own. When it is your turn, do your own. Meet hmm. and we not talk. Hmm. That's how we are living now. Hmm. Very so you sad. see this thing that we're saying, we're just saying it. We're just saying it. Because who wants to enforce it? Hmm. The person that we enforce it. don't still so now. If the person dies tomorrow, no, no be that that the person does. Yeah, see. now if you, if you can, when you sign a letter and say, Oh, yeah, go and check this. <coughs> the hand that you used to go and sign the letter, the hand is swelling up, swelling up. <laughs> Did they... <laughs> hey, oh. Oh, that this is happening, no. <laughs> Let's take a break now. We'll come to you then. <laughs> Let's take a very short break. When we come back from that break, what we'll open our phone? Let's say let's your thoughts on this. Hi! Hmm. Hmm. Now, wow, well, thanks for seeing us. <laughs> now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out. And we're discussing the impact of um, vandalism on public infrastructure. Now, please. Let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 70 That is the number to call. Remember, turn off the volume of all the devices that you are watching us from. The number again is 70 Please keep your, your contributions really short so that we can have a lot more callers. Let me come to you, NG. You are laughing. Hey, hey, Jela said your hand begin this way, but it's true. <laughs> when D Dora Kulini was trying to clean up uh, Navdak, I mean, there are some speculations that it was some people 
powerful people that she stepped on her their toes but that you know true. that we took her out things. we might act like like just like jenna said there's nothing we can do but do we know we know mm. but can we say anything or do anything the answer is no because the people who are perpetrating this thing or are the head of this thing are people we expect to be protectors <laughs> that's what i'm saying so for me i would go through so there are stories that have happened in the past so there was a story i think it was in june um sometime in june that a man who was vandalizing transformers you died of electrocution now for me that's like payback immediately hmm. that's nature doing its own work yeah and the thing about it is that the power company might still have to suffer for that mm -hmm. because when such a thing happens depending on how or where he was placed on the it can damage a whole lot of other facilities within the area now i'm rushing through this mm. so another situation i would take will be some time ago i think it was in ibadan um there was uh, during this um fall subsidy situation and a group of people were actually protesting now from protesting on fall subsidy they decided to vandalize a bank mm -hmm. and they were caught on camera some of them were arrested but not all of them got away but those that were arrested only God knows what was done because it's not like we read in afterwards, the news yeah. afterwards. Follow up news. Mm -hmm. There should be follow up news saying if they are really doing their work. There should be follow up news saying so so people that were arrested have mm -hmm. been convicted or they've been charged to court or something, giving an update for it. Now, I'm getting to the real one that has to do with government. Now, the next one is real charts. You have people that were uh, that were vandalizing real charts. I think about around three a.m. in the morning they were caught. We haven't heard anything about them. Now, the final one is the one that is quite amazing. Now, a uh, Kano State governor, when he got into, when he was sworn in and he got into his seat and he got to the states, started subsequent days, started um, demolishing all the previous, a few of the structures that had been put up by the previous government. Mm. By, uh, I think, Governor Ganduji. Ganduji, yeah. Mm. So, something like that. You might tell me some reports say it was done because they were on that uh, Ganduje had sold the property out, yeah, and it was government property. But I would say, why well, destroy them? Yeah, they they were ordered. Do you know how much in millions? I won't say billions because I don't know, mm. but how much in millions? Mm. Do you know how much in millions that would have gone down during that time? Let, let's take our first caller for the evening, then I'll come back to that. Hell. I'll come back to you again, Jennifer. <laughs> Hello, you're live. Hello. Hello. Good evening, my dear sister. Hi, Loma. Good mm -hmm. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Go ahead. We can hear you. Good evening. Yeah, this is Loma from Abia State. We already heard your voice. <laughs> the impact of vandalism. <laughs> uh, in fact, I don't know how to describe it. It's dangerous, also. it can bring us back to the dark ages. Mm. The, um, the impact can make us to go back. You know we are in technological age. It can take us back to the time where we used to use lantern, when we don't even have light. The impact of vandalism eh, in our present day. Just let me use my state, Abia State the catching point. The rail line, I don't know if it was vandalism, broad daylight vandalism, or they just decided to remove the rail line. They remove all the rail, there is no more rail line in Umwaya, especially. Then, when you look at it, you know that asking, was it a broad daylight vandalism? And what is really happening? No, they, they did not take it out and replace it. As I'm talking to you today, have you said, or some of the South East doesn't have rail. They took it. You will see policemen guiding those people. You see them pulling out those rail lines. This I call it broad daylight vandalism. So if it is maybe it is the federal government that gave them that order, why not replace it if mm. it is not vandalism? So the impact is so much. We don't have railway again. So we are crying. Use this your medium and tell federal government. So give us red line again. Thank you very much. And, and the, thank you, Loma, because you see, when we talk about impact, right, imagine what a functional rail system will do to the economy. Yeah. Do you understand? 
I mean, like, so I, I don't understand why. Because, you see, if it has lingered this long, yeah. right, it means that it, it, it doesn't... It, so, you know how people are, like, happy to keep spending money on the same thing? I mean, if it were your business mm. and somebody keeps stealing something, would you stomach it? But let me hear your thoughts, Jennifer. So, for me, right, um, you guys have actually really said it all. Um, Ajala mentioned how no one is taking um, responsibility for these things and that's because it is coming from the top level right and then vandalism leads to financial waste right like you rightly said you have to keep repairing and rebuilding over and over again and it is very hazardous to the human life now talking about the bridge when you remove these things from the bridge or you create manholes it means that someone would have an accident and eventually it might lead to death right people have lost their lives for little things like this you're removing the um the runway lights for what exactly because if you have a fly that is landing at night how do you want them to land properly mm. <laughs> so if, if something happens and people die the blood is on your hands and sometimes people don't really care about these things because they, they don't see the repercussion now. It's not, it's not an immediate effect. So, so, so I get you. And, you know, let us piggyback to what Diola had said. Because this one is a major one. And they affect me. Mm. And I know like, and they give me chest pain. You see this digging of road. Mm. Yeah. It is a constant key. Mm. And I see that if a government was serious about curbing road vandalism, right? How people go and destroy roads. You would go and fish out the cartel that put these people as either beggars or street hawkers. Do you understand? People that don't have street, street hawkers on their roads, they've not died. Hunger has not killed them because there's no traffic. Yeah. You can literally drive into a mall, buy what you want to buy and enter your car back and continue your journey. Do you understand what I'm saying? The fact that we have not accepted and, and, and it is part of us mm. that we must have street hawkers on the road is what is tiring for me. Mm. Now, I traveled to Oshun State, like I told you people the other time. I left Oshun State 4.30 in the morning because I wanted to beat every single traffic or whatever. We go to that beggar, I'm sorry, um, um, the Long Bridge or whatever, the right. Redeem Camp, yeah. at 6.30 a.m. We didn't leave that road until 11.30 a.m. You're not even talking. So when you talk about impact, outside of even the financial loss, there is my Fine. health yeah. that is at stake. People have died in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Because somebody wants to s deliberately slow down the traffic. So if you are serious as a government, right? First of all, ban all these people from the road. Find alternative means to get them um, um, gainfully employed. Do you understand? So that we don't have to have them on the road and they don't have to destroy the roads. Because no matter, as long as they are on those, um, what's it called, highways, trying to sell on a daily basis, we will continue to have um, traffic and they will continue to vandalize us. Because you cannot just, you can't stop on a, on a freeway mm -hmm. that is, you know, there's no traffic, there's no nothing. You have to slow down. Even when you're tra traveling like outside of state, you would notice that where you find those hawkers are where they put speed bombs. Mm. Because they deliberately put those speed bombs there and all of that so that they would just quickly sell one or two things, right? Mm. So I'm saying to you that for the highways, as long as we continue to have these people on the road, they will continue to vandalize them. They will continue to destroy public and government property. So if a serious government really wants to solve that problem, then you must find a way to find real solutions to their unemployment because it is unemployment that has caused their problem. Do you understand? I'm not, I, I don't Why agree do with that. Really? Why do you think I it's don't. the street hawkers that yeah. are the ones that are perpetrating this? Uh, there's a cartel, that's what I said. No, so yeah, then, but I don't think, I don't think necessarily the street hawkers have anything to do with Some street no. hawkers, they do. <laughs> no, Some I, do. I, I understand, do. I know the ones on the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those ones on the highway, yeah, but internally. No, the ones that walk within street well, is not, I'm talking about highway hawkers. Oh, okay, okay, So okay, I, okay. I think this is like um, a vicious cycle, right? Um... For every chaos you see, there are key stakeholders. Oh, that absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you understand? Now, because they are benefiting from it, they're not going to stop it. Mm -hmm. Now, if, 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 I, if I decide to vandalize the bridge and I remove some materials that are there, that means you have somebody who would be allocated that project, right? And will be funded with billions of naira 
to pull those things back to buy new materials yeah right now if i'm the one who is in charge of that i want that project to come to me right so that means if i put this today in the next one month i'm going to send someone to go back there and take it off Mm. Now, if you take it off, and I mean the good graces of the people who are releasing those funds, mm. they are going to allocate that project back, back to me. me. So at the end of the day, I am <laughs> taking my materials back, I am putting it back, I am not spending a dime. I am reselling. And that's how these things work, right? Even the beggars that we complain about sometimes, I heard that yeah. they have like a syndicate. It's a syndicate, yeah. You try to remove one beggar from the road. Yeah. In the in next two weeks, that beggar is back, back on, the road. on that road. Yeah. Let me not let me, because they don't want to, but because they have people who are in charge of that, to, and everyone is making money from it. <laughs> Sorry, let me also quickly say that outside of government infrastructure, even for I mean, we have big corporations, you know, like Telco, ZK, you know, NEPA and um, electricity and all that. What people do not understand is when you vandalize these things, the cost of it comes back to the consumers. Because energy companies, they're not going to keep, they're in business. So when there is some kind of vandalism, they are forced, you know, to rebuild or repair. Or, as long as they are spending this money, we bear the cost of that. It's going, I mean, it's, it's just common sense. So when you, when you think that, oh, you're so hungry or you're so poor to the point that you want to vandalize. I'll give you an example. When the Naira redesign thing happened and then people went berserk and they were destroying banks. I mean, what sense is that in, in destroying an ATM? Or, now, those communities are suffering. What do you think is going to happen when a bank comes into that community? First of all, they're going to be hostile to the people in that community. They probably won't give you good service. And some of them have no recovery. Exactly. Look at, look That's at what the more. state. When, that xeno crazy. when xenophobic, the xenophobic, um, what's it called, opera happened at the mall, I mean, till tomorrow, some of the stores never, never recovered. Yeah. Now, for you to be able to buy certain things, you have to drive a, a long mile. And I saw the people in that community, like, going to steal televisions, like it was like free for all, free money, free this, well, free that. About, you know? Yeah, in Circle Mall, has it been fi Circle Mall has not recovered. Yeah, not recovered. But Circle, recovered. Circle Mall, I think it's about it's, I think it's about three times. Mm. They have even been because they, they did the xenophobic, they did the answers, mm. you know, so it's almost like three times. A lot of business did not recover it, it from it. So it's a ripple and a very yeah, vicious effect. It doesn't make sense. You know, sense. so the impact, right? But that's why I'm saying that. How do we solve the problem? Because People again, they are rested. Yes. Plain and simple. And let, let us also treat it from the root. So now what I am saying is that those cartels is what you should target. You can't be targeting those people. Those people are just symptoms, what you are seeing on the street. Because as long as those syndicates exist, and these people, they can be fished out. It's not like the government cannot identify yeah, them. Yeah. Have you tried to see whether a policeman knows your address or not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You will, what, Just try to be in their bad books. You will know that they know your address, even down to your, your hometown. That's how good the police system is. So it's truly that the government is really serious about, you know, curbing this thing so that we can move forward. Because what I see us is retrogression. Like Loma said, we are actually retrogressing because there's no progress. For every single time you look through the budget of our country, you keep on seeing repetitive, um, what's it called, um, allocations. Why? Because something, you understand, that they had done before, they're doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? It's repetitive allocation. So imagine if we start to say, okay, you know what? We will protect. And that's where the roles of citizens come yeah. in. Right? That's why you notice that since they started all these estated uh, properties, right? Where you are living in an estate. You see that there's a bit of sanity when it comes to living conditions of people. Because before, it was like that as well. Mm. But now, because all these estated um, um, buildings, you know, they have personal security. So it costs a lot. So I would rather the government, because yesterday they said, oh, they had deployed some surveillance on the Niger Bridge going forward and all of that. They had deployed surveillance and all of that. So it's just be, it goes beyond surveillance, right? Outside of surveillance, the people that you have caught, have you what have they anything? been done? Yeah. What has been done to them? Yeah. So look at the, the allocation that is given to, um, I, for instance, I think uh, it's Asari Dokubo. Mm -hmm. It's an obscene amount of money. Do you understand? Just because he needs to protect the oil pipelines. Who were the people vandalizing, attacking yeah. and vandalizing the oil pipelines? So you see this thing, like you rightly said, chaos. You know, people are benefiting yeah. from it. Mm -hmm. 
Even inside all the transactions that happened with Boko Haram and all of that, there were people that were benefiting from it. So as long as we continue to have benefactors of some of all this chaos, it will continue to happen. So anybody that tells me that they are serious with us as a country moving forward, I need to see some level of strong measures because you know what? They know how to identify these people. Yeah. They can get them if they want to. Yeah. But they are choosing not to get them because, again, that is almost sometimes in my head, that's how I see it, their own kind of settlement. I don't settle you. Mm -hmm. So day or day. Do yeah. you understand? Yeah. But at who's, um, um, at the cost of who? Yeah. Because now we, the suffer them now. Yeah. Of course. Why can we not use, see, you see how, just to buttress your point, if you can't, I, if you look at my what's in the news and you look at those amounts, those billions, what will it take to buy camera? Hmm. How much is camera? I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah. saying. At these locations, how much is camera? But because they know that having a camera there will give real time, yeah? But they won't do that. They so won't. Let me even tell you. Why so. can that not be part of your budget? Why can't it? I would be satisfied if I see allocations. Mm -hmm. Security but surveillance. See yeah. But all those, all those. They, let me tell you, they can put it. Let me tell you something. You, she, she just <laughs> nailed No, the, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm buttressing what she yeah. said. Because that's the reason why it won't work. Yeah. The one that happened at Tollgate in court oh, that we saw oh, life on oh, direct. Mm. Let me even tell you, sir. So, eh? Gainful employment. Mm. So when you have employed, like all these neighborhood watch now, mm. with, with yeah. Lagos State employee, mm. how much do they pay them a salary? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Let me tell you something. If you calculate how much these street hawkers are making, mm. jumping up and down, and you gave them better options, mm. do you think that they will not take it in terms of employment? Mm. They will take it. Will take you a lot of them have lost their lives trying to sell one bottle yeah. of, of, of water. True. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to, first of all, match the, 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 the um, give them value for value. So if I tell you that I want to take you off the street, what are the alternative solutions? Those are real empowerments for me. So if you say, you know what, between... Uh, long bridge and this uh, whatever there's always chaos here happening so let's man let's employ this employ them let them become the 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 the, the watchdog the orders of and, that the orders and, all that. and pay them a decent salary give them clean uniform give them a patrol car you know all those kind of things that is too much for me to but ask whoever wants to on that note right? Yeah. You know, wasn't it the employees at the airport? Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Jennifer, you just, you just cut out my point. It's, <laughs> it's true. It's true. They're stealing these things every but day. But the employees stole because they believe that the people we buy it back from them. Yeah. No, but so, it's the same guess thing. what? That money, it's all of them that we share it. They have a, a click. It's a it's the thing. It's the same thing. On that note, we can't find a solution. <laughs> we, we have to bring the people mm. to come and tell us. What solution what, that what, they have? What they, what they have in mind? <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Now, before we go, I'm sure you follow us across all our social media handles at Ratio Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. Most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Infrastructure is the backbone of every economic growth. It, prov it improves access to basic services such as clean water and electricity, creates jobs and boosts businesses. So we're suffering job, uh, um, insufficient job is because, again, we're also vandalizing some of our infrastructure. So imagine if we really, you know, flip the coin. Maybe our economy will be a lot better. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <sighs> so bring another great conversation to your screen. <laughs>